Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are out there in the world. So there is a ton of great events happening right now around Ripple and XRP. And in the future, there is also going to be some very big ones. Like, for example, the XRP Ledger Apex, which is happening on June 11th through the 13th in Amsterdam. The big thing that I'm focused on with this is developers and builders. Hosted by Ripple, this is a can't-miss global community summit bringing together developers, innovators, businesses, users, and investors, shaping the future of the XRP ledger. And this is exactly what we need. We need more builders. We need a lot more innovators that want to come over to the XRP ledger. Um, there's going to be 700 plus attendees, 70 plus speakers, and 40 plus sessions. I'm very, very excited about this. There's a ton of uh, major names here that are going to be presenting, contributing, you name it. And um, I really do think think that this is going to be a big one to uh, focus on. Uh, during the summer of uh, 2023, we did get a ton of, uh, of great news. We got a ton of great insights. We got a full focus on, for example, um, the AMM. And all of that was uh, pretty crucial information to know because it allowed us to realize what's coming, what's happening, and what's being built around the XRP ledger. So this time around, I do think that we are going to get a glimpse at what's to uh, come around the XRP ledger. And also maybe we get some uh, focus put on the XRP ledger around builders and also innovators that want to come over to the XRP ledger and expand the ecosystem and also the community. So this is definitely one to watch for. If you guys do want to check it out, you guys are more than welcome to. Um, but beyond this, there's also some other pretty big summits and events happening. For example, the Australia Policy Summit. Now, this already happened, but this was a big one. Thank you for extending the warmest uh, G-Day at our first policy summit of the year, Sydney. A big thank you to our partner, Blockchain APAC, for the tireless support, as well as the 150 attendees who joined us yesterday as we discussed uh, strategies to encourage the adoption, growth, and responsible innovation of digital assets within the Australian market. We look forward to being back in the land down under very soon. Now, what's interesting about this is the images. We have Global Regulatory Outlook for Crypto and Digital Assets, followed by... This is just the vice president, but over here we have regulating digital assets in Australia, the way forward. Now, you can see some of the names here, but regardless, what I'm fully focused on here is regulations. Because we are getting closer and closer to regulations, and they linked us to the public policy on their website. Now, what's interesting about this? What's What are we really kind of focused on here? Well, it's not only just the future of banking, the digital asset space, and even just finance itself, it's the focus on regulations. Everyone is looking at, you know, XRP as this weak asset in the space, that it's not doing anything, it's, you know, dead, it's this, that, whatever. But what they're failing to miss is regulations. XRP is cleared for the next two years. Think about that. XRP has clarity from the courts for at least the next two years. Regulations are inching closer and closer day by day. XRP already has one foot through the door. Ripple is also focused on this. They know where we are at right now in this market. They also realize that once regulations come to this market, everything changes and it will. Everything is going to change once regulations are in place. Now, I've said this a hundred times already on this channel, but as we look at Ripple, they have also been at the forefront of this. Even though they got sued by, sued by the SEC, which I've always said I think that that was by plan, they are still at the forefront of this. Go to their global policy or global public uh, policy uh, link on their website, and you can see how they have been working with financial institutions, regulators, and central banks around the world to develop regulatory frameworks for crypto and blockchain. Guys, this is the same company that was sued by the SEC. And they have been working on regulatory frameworks for years and years and years, even prior to the lawsuit. And you're telling me that this was not by plan? Them getting sued by the SEC? But regardless of that, if we scroll down, we could see the policy focus areas. Crypto regulation, central bank digital currencies, anti-money laundering, climate change, and financial inclusion. 
And if we scroll down, we could also see the fact sheets and other material. And if you look at this, you could see everything that they have been focused on. They have the introduction to Ripple, crypto, common crypto myths, introduction to XRP and the XRP ledger, financial inclusion, how to spot crypto giveaway scams, sustainable future through crypto, SEC versus Ripple fact sheet, Ripple's commitment to safety as well. And you can learn more about Ripple's public policy uh, perspectives, even in the US, for an example, which they do link to everything and what they have been doing around regulations within the US. We also have the United Kingdom, for an example. They've been very, very vocal about uh, be becoming a leader in the UK region. But all of these other ones, and even global, you can see everything that they have been doing. And this is all public information. Like you can click on these and it will give you a PDF file on what they have been doing uh, regarding regulations within specific areas and how they have been working with regulators to push forward public policy around crypto and this entire space. But also, I put out a post regarding this. In fact, I actually quoted their public policy page here. We have at Ripple, we understand that compliance and risk management are critical to your bank, which is why we build solutions that offer greater visibility into and control over cross-border settlement. All of this is still catering to the specific use cases that Ripple is focused on. We even have here that by providing modern infrastructure for cross-currency settlement, Ripple reduces systemic risk in three key areas. Banks transact directly with each other, eliminating counterparties and associated settlement risk. Banks leverage a competitive marketplace for liquidity instead of depending on one FX provider. Banks use Ripple to communicate with each other in real time, which allows them to identify and resolve risk to payments before executing them, as well as to confirm delivery with absolute certainty. But what I said in this post was, as we inch closer and closer to global crypto regulations, you must be focusing on the companies in the space that are transparent and compliant. Ripple, regardless of what you believe because of the SEC lawsuit, is one of the most transparent companies in this space. And again, if we go back over here to all of these documents, I'm pretty sure that this confirms exactly what I said in terms of how transparent they really are. But we also have for over a decade, they have been attempting to work with regulators, including even the SEC. Uh, they have had private meetings with high-ranking individuals from the IMF, World Bank, BIS, Central Banks, etc. They recently joined the BIS CPMI group and con continue to shake up things within the traditional financial world. Regulations are being primed and they are inevitable. 99% of the space will evaporate with proper regulations because majority of this space is just noise. I personally see a handful of projects sticking around after regulations, and I did mention a lot of them, and of course others. Um, that 1% that's still here after regulations uh, go live, they will reap the rewards of putting in the time, the work, and jumping through the regulatory hoops. Many have gotten rich from crypto over the years. I personally see the most amounts of wealth made slash created coming from mass utilization of the technology. We don't get to that point without regulations, and that's when most of the retail crowd will be out anyways due to the re regulatory rug pull. Mika, stablecoin legislation, regulatory frameworks, it's all in progress, and it must be focused on failing to realize what's coming and how it will change the entire space will leave you missing out on one of the largest technological innovations in history and talking a little bit about that anderson put out a great post regarding um regulations and what's happening we have it seems a lot of positive developments in relation to cryptos coming to the eu now i don't really like their recent uh move which is like blocking self-custody i don't like that but again you need to focus on some of these moves during 2024, especially regarding three different developments, I think we have to look at all these pieces together instead of in isolation, and I believe it will especially be good for Ripple. Let me explain. Number one, movement of SIPA to the 2019 version of ISO 2022. With SIPA, think of transfers within the EU. This migration is happening today, March 17th. This will allow richer data, ease, uh, easier interoperability, and other systems, etc. SIPA has an instant payment scheme called SIPA Instant Credit Transfer. Number two, new regulations that will force banks and other PSPs, payment service providers, to offer instant transfers within the EU at the same cost as a regular credit transfer, meaning transfers to any other EU country that will take no more than 10 seconds. 
This will solve the last mile problem within the EU. Ripple especially has talked quite a bit about this issue. They even made a whole playbook about it. It becomes a lot easier to make a cross-border payment to within the EU if all transfers within the EU are instant. For an example, you could then make a transfer to one financial institution that's located in the EU that in turn can pay out into any account within the EU in the matter of seconds. This is very good. This piece of regulation should start to apply by the end of 2024. Put one and two together. EU becomes the first large jurisdiction, having a clear set of crypto regulations with the introduction of Mika. Companies will be able to passport their services to the rest of the EU by being registered in one EU country. For an example, Ripple is registered in Ireland and will passport its services to the rest of the EU. Having clear crypto regulations is critical for businesses to operate. Regulations will apply in two steps from June 2024 and from December of 2024. As a whole, 2024 looks really good for crypto businesses in the EU. If you want to view a picture of where I put all of this together, then click the IG link in the next tweet. And he does have this uh, down here if you guys did want to check it out. But regardless, you know, if we go back to this post over here, you could see um, how involved uh, Ripple has been in the EU. For an example, here we have three posts public consultation on an eu framework for markets in crypto assets this is actually mika we also have public in um publication in bank de france financial stability review policy and legal implications this was in 2016 and then we also have submission to the european central bank and also um i don't know how to pronounce this if i'm saying if i'm being honest so i don't want to try to pronounce it and say it wrong but this is for consideration at the joint conference getting the balance right innovation trust and regulation and retail payments but regardless you know as we really look at what's happening here yeah 2024 seems like it's primed to be the year of regulations and institutions getting into crypto but also recently monica long which is the president of ripple joined the newcomer banking summit in san francisco last week and this is with some uh, great names to discuss what's changed since the uh, svb banking crisis a year later and how blockchain and crypto can fundamentally improve access to financial services in partnership with banks and traditional institutions now, here are some uh, great uh, images. We also have the feature of banking here. You can see some of the names here. Um, again, as we really look at this, this is still fully focused on regulations. Over here, we have Monica Long quoting it and saying, 2024 is quickly shaping to be the year of crypto institutionalization on a macro scale, though worth noting that several TradFi companies launched crypto access, tokenization products, etc., in previous bear markets. But regardless, 2024 seems like it is the year where everything is changing. And what's funny about all of this is regulations, right? That is the secret key to it all. Without regulations, you don't get mass adoption like this. In fact, there was a great video that got posted actually by Subjective Views. And it was the next massive paradigm shift is TradFi interacting with blockchain. This is also from Marcus uh, Infiger. This is the SVP of Ripple X. This is at Digital Asset Summit 2024. Check this out. So for starters, uh, Ripple has been pretty transparent. We continue to be, and obviously as a leader in the space, I recommend following us to you know, keep, keep abreast of what's happening with crypto and payments. Separately, I think we're at the start of a really, uh, you know, like the next massive uh, sort of paradigm shift in terms of TradFi interacting with blockchain. I think, you know, the crypto sort of like speculative or as an asset investment class use case, that's reached critical mass. And now we're really getting to a point where we're talking more about real world utility, powering financial market infrastructure using blockchain technology. And so as we drive this convergence further, I think you will be just seeing also more, uh, you know, what's real, what's happening in the real economy using blockchain technology um, and so forth. Now, like I said, you don't get to this massive paradigm shift without regulations. Now, some of these big institutions are already here. They are already jumping into a few things. They're launching, you know, tooling products, things like that around crypto. But the major use cases, the scalable use cases, the adoption of these use cases, that doesn't happen until we have proper regulations. Now, like I said, 2024 is the year that this all starts. That's why I said, like, as we inch closer and closer, like you need to be focused on these companies. You need to be focused on these projects because you are missing out on a massive opportunity. 
and Ripple with XRP are at the forefront of this. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join for your Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.